Charlie Appleby. Man the barricade! Probably gonna beat up Indian River. No, well. Wait for him. He'll be back. <laughs> Charlie Appleby, that crazy lunatic. He's gotta be stopped. said he was gonna come back. He will, but not the way we expect. Full of surprises, old Charlie. Hey, you guys waiting for the enemy or what? No, he's waiting for Charlie. We're gonna shoot him down. Don't kid yourself, son. I was too high. I told him that. Didn't even see me. Laid a couple of eggs on you before you knew I was there. Right? Could be. I just had time to duck. <laughs> Thought I fooled you. When are you coming up for a ride with me, Joe? Oh, I think I stay with my canoe. <laughs> <laughs> well, every man to his taste. I get plumb scared in a canoe. Well, what's cooking? Hot dogs and coffee. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> Well, they made it this time. Fortunately, it's a big country. It doesn't come through here too often. It's been through here twice too often already today. Now, what's his background, anyway? I don't know very much about him. He told me about himself one time. He started flying during the First World War. Couldn't settle down afterwards. Tried his hand at a number of things, and then went bush piloting during the Depression back in the 30s. He's been at it ever since. He's an old-timer. Oh, he certainly is. Incidentally, he's quite a scholarly old-timer. He can make Zeke look like quite a monkey. Oh, well, maybe so. But still got to do something. If he goes on like this, he'll kill somebody. Oh, I don't know. He knows how to fly. Yeah? Well, that machine looks as though it might be tied together with string. It is. I guess he's just pretty good with knots. You say he goes to the fort? Might just get him there. Thanks for the coffee. Watch out, Sergeant. I told you what he could do with Zeke. Well, much obliged to you. Enjoyed my lunch. There's no hurry. Why don't you stick around for a while? like to, but duty calls. I have a customer to pick up some way north. Wants to get back to the city in a hurry. Thinks he's discovered gold, poor guy. He won't stay poor long if he has. <laughs> Depends on what you mean by poor. Kind of like a car coming. Mr. Appleby? Yep. Just exactly what did you think you were doing? Hedge hopping. Well, that's one name for it. And a darn good one. You a flying man, sir? No. Too bad. You'd like it. Well, I didn't like it today. Neither did George Keeley or a lot of other people. Yeah, I guess it could be a little different from underneath. Yeah, it certainly is. Well, that's just human frailty. A man can't always think of these things. Well, you better start thinking about your license. I don't suppose you want to lose that. License? Yeah, license. Let me see. 
I'm pretty darn sure I had a license at one time. Well, you better still have it, and I hope it's valid. I can check. I bet you can. You've got quite an organization nowadays. I wish I could just explain it to you. Explain what? The way it gets you. The kick. The exhilaration. You get a kind of spiritual catharsis. You, you recall what Aristotle said about tragedy in the theater? Well, it escapes me for the moment. Do you mind if I butt in? Go right ahead, son. The floor's yours. I want to fix this business of low flying over Indian River. Low flying? You never got within a couple of feet of it. Yeah, well, a couple of feet isn't enough. Now, look, I don't want to make a big thing out of it, but it's got to stop, understood? Sure, that's the way you feel about it. Just so long as I don't forget myself. Won't happen again, but sometimes get a little carried away. Well, make an effort. Yeah. Do me best for your son, just so long as I remember. I'll tie a knot in something. I'm told you're good at knots. Nice kid. <laughs> well, time I got myself airborne. Well, Oh, is something wrong? I don't know yet, maybe. Hi. Ching Wok. I think you better talk to him. Sure, what about? Well, he thinks he saw an aircraft crash two days ago. Two days ago? It took him two days to come down the river by canoe. You sure you saw a plane crash? I see. Getting old, sometimes his English isn't too good. Ching Wok. Pretty sure. Where? I'm the Ima. Ah, uh, the man. Je gai, uh, uh, as Masalaganig. Huh? Around Snowshoe Lake. Did he go up and take a look? Kiki Waban Danna. Bush is pretty thick around there. It could have taken days. Well, I don't want to hurt your friend's feelings, but it's all a bit vague. And no aircraft are reported missing. Charlie Appleby took off two days ago, heading north. Like this? Snowshoe Lake. I bet he didn't leave a flight plan with anybody, and I'll bet his radio doesn't work. Charlie wouldn't crash. What makes Charlie Appleby immortal? Practice, I guess. Well, we've darn little to go on. But I'll try and borrow the hydro helicopter and go up and take a look myself. We could be there pretty quickly with horses. Be in the area before nightfall. Then we could start looking around at daybreak. I won't try and stop you, but I think you could be wasting time. Uh, I think you could be right. Yeah, but you said... No, I didn't say Charlie Appleby was down on the bush. I just said he went that way. I think I'll come with you. 
Shingwak, you quit your bisha, yeah? Got the wabbing jarmets. Be my thing. All right. Thanks a lot, just the same. I'll talk to you again. Just dandy. The helicopter's out of commission for 24 hours, and no other aircraft are immediately available. Could call in the Air Force. And tell them what? Tell them some slightly crazy character thinks he saw a plane crash a couple of days ago. But he's not sure, and his English isn't too good. Fire towers saw nothing unusual, and air control says no one's lost one anyhow. Very convincing. You think it could be Charlie Appleby? I think he's just crazy enough to go flying without a flight plan or a working radio. I'm going to take a truck and some men and do a ground search. Meantime, I'll try and locate him here. Yeah, you do that. And if you do happen to find him, tell him I'm doing 40 miles over a disused logging road and give him my regards. Cleaned out by Indians or something? Place looks deserted. Where is everybody? Looking for you, I guess. Me? You're supposed to have crashed back in the bush. I don't crash. You people ought to know that. What are you doing here? You decided to stay home and let me perish? I got the short end. I'm on radio watch. I see. Like some hot chocolate? I guess put some on. That's a nice idea. And while we're drinking it, you can tell my brave rescuers they can come home. They call me back in the radio around five. I can't get in touch with them before that. Well, they're getting plenty of fresh air and exercise. It's like another rescue party. Or have you been... Never came below ten feet. I'd like a word with you. What's the trouble, son? We got a report suggesting you might be lost in the bush. I don't get lost in my own backyard. You don't have a very good memory, either. Didn't we have a little talk about low flying? That's right. Well, how about when you went over a few minutes ago? I was at least ten feet above your office. Well, what do you expect, son? I don't carry oxygen. Say, what got you thinking I might have gone in? An Indian claims he saw a plane go down in the neighborhood of Snowshoe Lake. Well, it wasn't me. Could have been somebody else, though. I think he's an unreliable witness, and no planes are reported missing. Still, can't afford to take a chance. I know that. Like me to go take a look? Save me 40 miles over a logging road. Okay. Be back in Indian River around 6 o'clock. Fine, I'll be in my office. And come in at ground level on foot. <laughs> I'll uh, tie a knot in my rudder bar. Like to come along for the ride, son? Yeah, I sure would. Okay, let's go. You got a radio? Yeah, but it gets temperamental. Unless this is some kind of saint's day. It's not working. I'll pick up a walkie-talkie. You do that, and I'll try and fool my motor into starting. Sometimes I've got to sneak up on it from behind when it's not looking. <laughs> you hear it? for logic, but it could be someone else, if it isn't Charlie, if it's anyone, if you know what I mean. Second prize for logic. What do we do now, Joe? 
No, I think we go on for a little. Snowshoe Lake isn't far. Then maybe we try and talk to Chubb again. Hmm? You see the kids down there? I have my eyes closed. You didn't tell me you were going to do that. <laughs> Human frailty. Guess I have more than my share of it. You want to talk to them on that gadget of yours? Just, just give me a couple of minutes. Be over Snowshoe Lake in a couple of minutes. That's it right ahead. Keep out of sight and you won't get hurt. See that, son? It's a sea plane and hunting lodge. That must be the plane the Indians saw coming down. It's okay to me. Yep. Like to talk to your buddies? XNY 556, five, beat for Bob Smith, please, over. XNY 556, five, beat for Bob Smith, please, over. Hey, Chubb, where are you? Over. Above Snowshoe Lake. Look, Mike, there's a seaplane parked on the lake with a hunting lodge. It looks okay. Will you check it with Joe? Over. Okay, Chubb, stand by. You get that, Joe? Well, that's the Harvey place. Now, I guess they opened it a little early this year. Think that's the plane she walks off? I think so. Maybe we just check out the lodge tomorrow. But it seems all right. Okay, Chubb. Panic's over. Be seeing you. Over and out. Joe thinks it's okay. Fine. Might just go down and take a look at the whites of their eyes. Hold on to your hat, son. Hey, hey. you guys. I guess you must have dozed off. I'll just look around for a place to land. In this bush? Oh, as long as it's as big as a half dollar, I can make it. Dozed off. It can happen. Why don't you get that gadget of yours and tell your buddies where we are? And while they're coming, uh, we can go take a look see. That's the boy with the gun. The one with his hands tied must be somewhere inside. How do we separate them? That float plane is tethered pretty close to the shore. Now, if I could take off on her... Well, that'd make them think. You stick around and extemporize. And come again? Do what comes natural, son. <laughs> Peter, you, you will not get away with these. Don't you lose any sleep over me. 
I don't understand you. What difference does it make to you who is president of my country? 20,000 bucks. That's what I'm being paid. I'm just a wage slave. What's that? I think perhaps it is your wages taking off. Stanley, like me to cut you loose? Please. My name is Manuel Moreno. Hi. My father is President Moreno. Congratulations. Uh, you know who he is, of course. Should I? If that feels a bit more comfortable. Thank you. After all, why should you know him? We are less important than we think. Let's get out of here before your buddy comes back. Come on. Oh, hi. Just waiting for Charlie. Joe, this guy with the gun back there. At the Harvey place? Yeah, and I gotta hunt this caballero. Better get going right now. You ride a horse? Certainly. He can ride my horse. I'll ride back with Chubb and Charlie. His dad's President Marino. Not THE President Marino. You have heard of him? I read the newspapers when I can. He's in the middle of a presidential election right now. Papers say the opposition snatched you away. I guess that's so they could put the screw on your pop. Exactly. How come they brought you to this neck of the woods? Because this is a long way from home, and because Senor Harvey would prefer to have the opposition in power. Well, what's he got to do with it? He has business interests in my country, but not for long, I think, not after my father's re-election. You seem pretty confident. One of my country's proud traditions is that we never embarrass the opposition by allowing them to take over the government. Isn't it about time you guys got going? You get him back to where the others are waiting with their horses. What about you, Joe? Wait for me there. I stay here until Charlie gets back, then I come. Okay. Joe, how far is it to Indian River? Oh, around 40 miles. Only 40? Why? I think I'll walk. <laughs> hey, President Marino's in again. <laughs> That's fine. Nice kid, young Manuel. You hear a car coming? Can't be the sergeant. I didn't pass over in the river today. Now, now, just a minute. It's okay, Charlie. This came through diplomatic channels. I understand it's a citation for courage, resource, just about all the domestic virtues. Signed by President Marino on behalf of a grateful nation. Won't stop you from getting hungry, but it'll look great up on the wall. Leave them to it, I guess. Anyhow, time I got airborne. Ha, 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 ha. 